but we're looking at the top of the patient's head. They're lying down in front of us, supine, okay? This is anterior, you can see their nose right here, right, left, frontal bone, parietal bones, occipital bones here. We're gonna put them in a vault hold. We're looking down right at the top of their head. Now let's add our sphenoid. This is our sphenoid here. No, it's not a sphenoid, but as far as 3D goes, this is the best I could do. It's an atlas. And let's add our occiput. No, it's not technically an occiput. It's a sacrum, but it's the best I can do for 3D at this point in time. All right, there's the greater wings of the sphenoid. There's the basi sphenoid, the basi occiput. There's the squama there. Now remember, your second digit or index finger is going to be on the greater wings, and your fifth digit or your pinky finger is going to follow the occipital squama. And remember, wherever the basi sphenoid goes, that's the direction that the sphenoid is moving. Okay, let's talk about a physiological strain pattern and what that is. Physiologic means the basi sphenoid and the basi occiput stay articulated. They stay close together, okay? And in the torsion, we're going to name the torsion after the side that the greater wing is superior. This particular example the greater wing on that right side moves superiorly or towards you. So we're going to call this a right torsion because the greater wing is moving superior on the right. Now to compensate for that, the occipital squama on the right side is going to move inferiorly. Okay, and I have to keep basi occiput and the basi sphenoid together, but you can see how the occipital squama on that right side is moving inferiorly, and the opposite is happening on the left side. On the left side, that greater wing is moving inferiorly or towards the feet, okay, and the occipital squama on the left side is moving superiorly. So this is how a right torsion looks like. Left torsion would be exactly the opposite. So now let's talk about axes and planes for torsions. Okay, the axis is gonna be an anterior posterior axis, okay? And as you can see, this anterior posterior axis is what the sphenoid is going to move around. And you can see it's a side bending movement or lateral flexion movement, okay? Same thing for the occiput. So around an anterior-posterior axis, you have what we would be a side-bending movement. So for a torsion, a right torsion, that right greater wing is going to move superiorly, and that right occipital squamate is going to move inferiorly. Now, let's not forget about our planes. So the plane is the plane is going to be a frontal or coronal plane, okay? So there's two planes. The sphenoid has a plane, and, and the occiput has a plane as well. And they are two frontal coronal planes in which the occiput and the sphenoid will side bend in. Okay, the next thing we have to look at is if the sphenoid and occiput are moving in the same direction or opposite directions. So let's use a clock because that usually tells us if something is moving clockwise or counterclockwise. And if we have a right torsion, okay, you can see the greater wing moving counterclockwise. So the sphenoid is moving counterclockwise while the occiput is going to be moving clockwise. So in a torsion, the sphenoid and occiput are moving in opposite directions. Okay. Now what would cause a torsion? Well, if someone gets hit on the top of their head, let's say on the left side, they get hit right here, and that force is moving from superior to inferior, and it causes that greater wing to move inferiorly, see that's going to cause the greater wing on the right side to become superior. And again, the occiput is going to compensate for that, and so that would cause 
a right torsion. What, what else could cause? What else could cause a torsion? Well, let's say someone gets hit on the bottom of their jaw, more on the right side, not midline, but on that right side, causing that greater wing to move superiorly. So it's an undercut, causing that great greater wing to move superiorly and having the sphenoid compensate. That's another way that you could have a right torsion. Okay, now we're gonna talk about a torsion. And in a torsion, one greater wing is going to move superiorly and the other one is gonna move inferiorly. So in a torsion, we'll say this is a right torsion, that right greater wing is moving superiorly. And we're gonna call that a right torsion. Now in compensation, the occiput is going to move in the opposite direction. So the right occipital squama is going to move inferiorly and the left occipital squama is going to move superiorly. So there's a right torsion. So instead of going into flexion, this is its flexion. It goes into a torsion like this. Okay, you can clearly see the right wing. We call this a right torsion. The right wing is moving superiorly while the right occipital squama is moving inferiorly. You can clearly see that the left greater wing is moving inferiorly and the left occipital squama is moving superiorly. So let's look at this. This is what you're going to be able to see. Right torsion. Right torsion. Right torsion. Right torsion. Right torsion. Right torsion. Now how that's going to feel in your hand, how right torsion is going to feel in your hand, is your right index finger is going to move superiorly and your right index finger is going to move inferiorly like this and then the left side the opposite is going to happen your left index finger is going to move inferiorly and your left pinker is going to move superiorly so it's right torsion right torsion right torsion right torsion right torsion right torsion right torsion